Well, I want to do a short update on my health and some of the things that are on my mind this morning. And uh, so, so glad uh, to have this opportunity to communicate with uh, my friends, my family members, uh, the supporters of the Christian Research Institute, uh, those that are making a difference not only for time, but also for eternity. First, I want to give a quick uh, health update. Uh, this week was another good week in my progress, my road to complete recovery. Uh, it now seems as though the engrafting process of my uh, my T cells is uh, is working in a a fantastic way. Uh, my white blood cell count, my absolute neutrophil count, all of those are going up on their own without having to take these shots. I used to have to take uh, Zargio shots that boost the uh, white blood cell count and so forth, and uh, they gave me tremendous headaches, and now I don't have to take that. I'm also off of a drug that um, uh, that uh, is a drug designed for uh, graft-versus-host disease. Yeah, I don't seem to have any signs whatsoever of graft versus host disease. This is where the, uh, the the war between the host, I would be the host and the graft, my son Paul, Stephen, who donated the stem cells, uh, would continue and uh, in that war you end up having symptoms like diarrhea and vomiting and nausea and skin rashes and all these kinds of things. I don't have any of those. So they've taken me off those drugs. Those drugs did have a side effect, at least a perceived side effect, which was neuropathy in my feet, sort of a feeling like you're walking on gravel, uh, a tingling or a prickling in the, in, in, in the feet, which was a little uncomfortable, but um, hopefully that'll dissipate now that I'm off those drugs. So another milestone in my, in my journey to complete recovery. I feel terrific. My, my energy is as good as it's ever been. In fact, I went through a test before I did the transplant to see what my cognitive and my physical abilities were. And then after uh, words, about 110 days after the uh, the transplant, you do the same thing, and then you compare. My cognitive function uh, has not diminished in the least, uh, which is a tremendous blessing. On top of that, my physical acuity is good. I'm now working out with a trainer, uh, trying to get uh, some of the muscle mass back that I lost. Uh, my waist size has gone down from 38 to uh, 32, 33. I sometimes still wear some 34s. They're loose on me, but uh, I have lost that weight because I have intentionally changed my eating patterns as a result of a book by Dr. Jay Richards, which we're going to be promoting in the near future. On other fronts, I have been meeting with some key Chinese leaders talking about the situation in China, which is um, quite horrendous. Uh, our Chinese brothers and sisters are suffering. Uh, persecution, of course, oftentimes is the seed by which the church grows. The church has always grown in persecution, but the kind of persecution that is happening in China is, 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 is quite something. I've spent a lot of time in China over the last 10, 15 years, and today's China is dramatically different than the China I visited. Uh, as many of you know, President Xi has initiated some laws whereby Christians in China uh, who are 18 and under uh, cannot go to church. They are forbidden to go to church. And even in the registered church now, there are portraits of President Xi. Uh, in many cases, the, the crosses are pulled off of churches because the adage is that the, the skies belong to communism and not to Christ. 
So these are serious changes that are taking place in China. And it highlights the fact that children are to be taught in the home by their parents. This is something that Moses made plain, that we ought to teach our children, talk about our faith when we walk along the road, tie the precepts of our faith on our fingers, write them on the doorposts of our home. Above all, do not forget the God who created us, who sustains us, who holds every moment of our life in his hands. And if there is but one generation that fails to pass on the gossamer thread of the faith from parent to child, the faith begins to diminish rapidly. So in China, some of the wonderful leaders in the recovery are now committed to teaching the parents to teach their children so that even though these children are not going to churches because they are forbidden to do so, they are not losing the faith once for all delivered to the saints in this very important generation. This morning I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal about church attendance. Church attendance is falling rapidly. In many cases, we're whistling as we walk by the graveyard, so to speak, unaware that Christianity in the West is in sharp decline. But it need not be so. This is one of the reasons that I have written my book, Truth Matters, Life Matters More. I'm convinced that Generation Z and the millennial generation is looking for authenticity in the historic Christian faith. Not a show, not an extravaganza. What you win them by, you win them too. They are looking for an authentic experience with the living God, union with God, fellowship in the Holy Trinity. Uh, this, this last couple of weeks, I received a copy of my, my book on tape read by somebody else, and I just wasn't satisfied with it, and I told my publisher that. And they asked me if I would voice the book myself, which was a huge undertaking, taking something that I had to do within a very short period of time. And so we've been working on that the last couple of weeks. I've now read through the whole book with passion and I think with precision. Uh, so the audio book will be released at the same time as the book itself. That'll be November 12th. Uh, coming up in a very short period of time. Of course, uh, for friends of the Christian Research Institute, supporters of our ministry, I have advanced copies, and I am still uh, in the process of signing literally hundreds and hundreds of those books and personalizing others for those that support the ministry of the Christian Research Institute. I do so gladly. I come in at 5.30 most mornings, and I sign for quite a long time before I get into my other duties. I'm looking forward to being live on the Bible Answer Man broadcast, perhaps on Monday. I'm doing podcasts again, and uh, just engrossed with vigor in the ministry of the Christian Research Institute, the Bible Answer Man broadcast the Hank Unplugged podcast, uh, and our 24-7 outreaches around the world. I've never been more invigorated, uh, never had more energy than I have today. I guess I should thank Paul for his 24-year-old stem cells. I feel like a 24-year-old. I'm sure you looking at me on this video say, look in the mirror, you are not 24, but I feel like I'm 24. 
I feel like God has given me a new lease on life. I've gone through this entire year from the time the tumors came back with a ferocity that was uh, quite uh, daunting. Uh, tumors popping out all over the place, visible tumors and then tumors uh, within. But I've gone through this whole period of time with total and complete peace. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I almost died twice this year uh, on, on, on February 4, and uh, then later on uh, in, in June, June 25. Uh, and uh, so I'm acutely aware that God gave me back my life. My life belongs to Him. I want to serve Him, and of course, I can't do it alone. Uh, we often ask people to support this ministry, and I do not want to be mercenary in any way or to ask people to support the ministry in a way that would displease my Lord. He has always provided. But God uses means, and you can be the means uh, by which this ministry continues to thrive. I've often said when the president is away, and I have been away, uh, in the hospital for a long period of time, chemotherapy, radiation, and all the things that go with fighting cancer. So I had been gone for a long period of time. I've been in isolation for a long period of time. I'm now out of isolation. But during that time, oftentimes support drops precipitously, and that has been the case with us. And so for those of you that can stand with us, not only prayerfully, but in a very tangible way financially, please support the ministry of the Christian Research Institute. You can give in a safe, secure fashion on the web at equip.org. Uh, you, uh, you can write the ministry at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. Uh, you can call in your support uh, to the ministry, um, but if you can support the ministry of the Christian Research Institute, whatever you can do, some of you can give a large amount of money. Perhaps the Lord has blessed you uh, with the sale of a business or whatever it happens to be. Some of you can give smaller amounts, uh, but whatever you can do, it would be deeply appreciated, used for God's glory and for the extension of his kingdom. But again, uh, God ordains the ends as well as the means. So as I am at peace with my own uh, personal journey through cancer, I'm at peace with God's provision for this ministry as well. So thank you for tuning in to uh, this quick update on my health. As always, I, am, I, I, I don't know how to express my thanks for the prayers of God's people. So many people have prayed for me uh, during this uh, very, very uh, uh, trying year, but also wonderful year, a uh, year in which I've gone through a spiritual surgery and come to an absolute end of myself. I used to say, I've got this. Now I say, God's got me. God has me in the palm of his hand. And so it is no longer I, but Christ. I love that passage. I've used it in videos before, but it's appropriate again. I must decrease. He must increase. It's very, very much what happened with my stem cell transplant. I, as the host, had to decrease. The blood of another had to completely overtake me 100% to the extent that there were any vestiges of my blood system, immune system left, uh, it would be a problem. And in the same way, Christ has to be my all. As I read about in the book, the Christian life is not about an exchanged life. The early church fathers talked about uh, excuse me, not about a changed life, as the early church fathers talked about. They talked about the exchanged life, the life of Christ within. And therefore, the reference to what John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. And so I've seen that in a physical way. I'm now 100% my son Paul Stevens' immune system, blood system, and... Uh, 
And in the same way, the blood of another, the blood of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ courses through my veins. So thankful for the Eucharistic bounty, uh, which is the tree of life, one of the graces by which we might become by grace what God is by nature. But again, thank you for your prayers, for your support. Uh, we will continue to work with diligence uh, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit to extend his kingdom and to work for his glory. Everything we do is not for a legacy. My books aren't for a legacy. They are for his glory. I hope many of you will not only get the book, but read through the book carefully, particularly part two. Uh, that is about how life matters more. You know, you can't, you can't eat the menu. It's not nutritious. It points you to something beyond itself, and that is life. Jesus promised in John 10.10, 10, that we might have life abundantly or life that is life to the full. I've experienced that in the most wonderful way and I hope that all of you experience that as well. It's important in a post-truth culture to stand for truth no matter the cost, but that stand for truth must also lead us to the life that matters more. So again, I think this is the third time I've tried to close this video. <laughs> again, thank you for your, your prayers, for your support. Uh, you have been wonderful. And uh, I'm uh, living proof that God answers prayer. Uh, God's answers are always perfect. He's kept me around for a purpose. And I want to serve you with vigor, with passion, uh, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So thanks for tuning in to this video. Look forward to seeing you shortly with another. I'm going to get right back to signing more of these books. And uh, I hope you will get the audio book. When I was uh, checking to see if I had voiced the audio book correctly, I have the book out and I'm following along as uh, I'm listening to the audio. And I find that that's a wonderful way to get the message in through both the eye gate and the ear gate so that it sticks with you so that you can remember it. And if you can recall it, you can use it and then you'll have the template for the life that matters, matters more the life that is abundant. So again, thank you so much for your prayers and support. Look forward to seeing you soon on another uh, Bible Answer Man uh, video. Uh, so check this out, pass along to your friends, and so long for now.